Do you remember those things? As a kid, did you have those in South Africa? You never had those. What the f are you talking? I think this about? is showing my age and just where I was, where I was born, where I grew up. There's like those, these tubes, like some sort of like thing inside, and you go like this, and turn it upside down, it'll go. Please show me that on YouTube. Those things. Oh yeah. Like that's all we had to play with as young kids growing up. That and finger traps. You see in South Africa, we had like Grand Theft Auto and shit. I was already old by then. Really? <laughs> yeah. Speaking about age, I'm going to be 30 this week. Oh my God. It's a big, big podcast. Welcome everyone to episode two of Joe and Casper hit the pod. Joe and Casper hit the mic. Excuse to hang out. We're not too sure what this podcast is called yet, but um, we had some great suggestions and thank you so much for all your comments. That episode was not supposed to go out. It was no. meant to be. I always saw it as a thing of like just testing things out and just trying it and it wouldn't see the light of day, but it's good for us to watch back and, and you know, work out what works and what doesn't. Whereas Casper was like, no, let's post it. Let's I thought it, it was now. the best thing I ever did. This is also why we work well together as like co-founders and business mm. partners oh, because amen. you're very much a kind of, yeah, let's do it. And I'm scared to do anything. You gotta, you gotta <laughs> release things to the world, test and learn. It's when people build applications. Yeah. I call them applications. They are also known as apps. Uh, they, if someone tries to perfect it before they release it, they're gonna create something that's super good in their own opinion, but no one's gonna actually care. Yeah, true. So I, I can't. I get distracted by your hand whenever I, you talk. <laughs> You're getting very politician-y. Is with that, that why hand. you gave me a microphone that I have to hold with my other hand? Otherwise, that, I'd use both. That's the other point. We have also upgraded our microphones to the. This. Speaking about microphones, I have a muff for you. Well, can we just talk about the difference in our mics? Mine's quite like long. A small little um, muff on the end. Whereas Casper's, I can only describe that as you've got the choded mic. <laughs> you've got a chode. If this is anything about our um, our organs on our body. Mine's very um, <laughs> big and it's got a weird attachment to it. It's got a big old uh, big old mushroom on the end. There we go. And a short stubby little uh, yours, shaft. <laughs> yours, is, yours is nice and thin. Yeah. Exactly how I imagined it. Thin and um, long like a pencil. So I got you a muff. I've never taken a muff off during a podcast before. Really? Oh, you see, what do you, oh, it's a bit big. <laughs> now it makes my <laughs> mic look ridiculous. Now I've got the choke. Can I change back? You can. It's, it's making you me can feel insecure. Back. You can change back. <laughs> it's only taken one podcast to double the the production value. Yeah. And imagine where we'll be in 10. Oh, who knows? Maybe like, and also we changed the studio as well. We are sat in the hallway of my house. We're in just house. Oh, can we speak about your house for a second? No, I'd rather not. It's, it's incredible. I'd and, rather not. <laughs> and Joe and I look, Joe's obviously always been a little bit of a, of a bigger success. Let, let's just be honest. Incorrect. And, and so in life, I've always been like, okay, I'm, I'm maybe five years behind Joe when it comes to my, you know, my career as a, as a creator, as a dancer, as a, as a voice actor, but, but I don't think I'm anywhere near this level right now. This house. No, but it's because you live in London where everything costs four times the amount. Uh, I'm currently still in a one bed in London. This is, I'm not going to give it away, but it's, it's more than one bed. I mean, I feel like I could fit my apartment in your um, uh, cinema room. Yeah, this is making me feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Casper Lee is currently in his last year of being in his 20s. It's weird because I I was always the young one. Well, you would in my life. Was was it? Isn't Ollie's younger than you? Ollie, okay. Yeah. Ollie's younger, but he looks the <laughs> oldest. I think out of all of us. <laughs> would you agree? I agree. I think so. But when you touch his skin, it's like a baby's bottom. Yeah, like play doh. It's just like oh, you just kind of want to cuddle him. So I've always been the youngest. I'm the younger sibling. I'm younger than my parents. I'm younger than you. I'm younger yeah. than just most people. Yeah. And, and now I'm starting to look around, especially in London. This is going back to maybe it's time to leave. Everyone just seems to be in their early 20s and I can I can see it mm. and now I kind of know what you probably felt like with us Yeah, you're like I did. You, you're just constantly looking at us like wow. Yeah, you're, you're young. Yeah, is that but I, but I don't I've always had this thing there growing up where I always just for some reason I always put myself as a younger person so even like our friendship group yeah. I always sometimes look at you guys and see you as like elders is that do you think because all humans see themselves as like when they were young and no matter what even when we're 80 we're gonna still think we're young and yeah. we're just gonna i think especially like our generation i feel like the millennial generation in particular do you class the millennial yeah no i am i think 1996 is gen z so i'm like the last two years of millennial so i feel like as a millennial that you're a proper millennial we never quite grew up we're still stuck in this thing of like mm. I, I saw a 
over Easter. Like Grand Tines. Kind yeah, like uh, over Easter <laughs> I saw this. Um, over Easter I saw this TikTok or a YouTube video or an uh, Instagram video of um, showing people's parents when they were like 22, 23 and they're getting married. Mm. They're like um, in suits and just like slick, like cool looking hair. Then it cuts to like their older brother who's 32 and he sat there opening his Easter basket <laughs> around his mum and parents' house who he never moved out of. So I feel like we're, as a generation, we're sort of stuck in this time where we're, we still think we're kids. It's housing. Do you think it's a housing it's crisis? It's housing. It's the housing. 100%. Yeah, but I have it. I still have yeah, it. Yeah, but you're just, you're, you're an outlier. You should have a kid right now. You got everything you need to have a kid. I think if I was still a roof thatcher and I didn't start YouTube, I reckon I would probably have two or three kids by now. But that's the opposite of why I think people aren't having kids. I think people aren't having kids because it's expensive to have kids and so on. Anyway, getting back to that, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm someone who's doing well in my life financially. You know, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> well but, I but can see a fiver over there. I That's not mine. No, I it still must be yours. feel like I'm not ready to have a child. Really? Because I'm like, I want to be secure. One day when I'm financially secure, I'll do it. And maybe it's just like our generation, including myself, is just never satisfied. Amber, are you ready for a child? Uh, no, from Amber. <laughs> Maybe not, it's Amber. With, with Casper, just to clarify. <laughs> no. <laughs> she said, what? <laughs> oh. Maybe can, someone else. I can remember when Casper, when we were younger, and we used to talk about like kids and stuff, you said that you wanted 12 kids. I, I don't think I I think you did. That. I think you said you wanted 12 kids so that you could have them all like pulling a sledge with you sat in it. Yes, <laughs> that's why. Um, so that they can pull me around and I don't have to pay for, for diesel. And you said you'd tell them that Father Christmas isn't real, right? I would, no, I said that, that's true, I, okay. So I can't get my head around that. So Father Christmas isn't real. Now, everyone knows this. The Easter Bunny's not real, the Tooth Fairy's not real. We lie, we, we normalize lying to a whole gener Joe, <laughs> Joe, if you're not, watching is looking very sad right now no i just, just just told him these things aren't real but why have we normalized something like this it's also people watching this or listening to this that are playing it in their car or watching at home and they've got kids sorry <laughs> uh let's do can we do a spoiler alert Maybe post? <laughs> i couldn't get my head around that that you would that you wouldn't tell them like because it's the magic like, no, even I, though i was told to lie as a kid some lies they don't damage you i don't think do but they? they're just gonna go everything casper says is a lie do you think yeah well i mean I, I, that's i want to train my kids to know that if I tell them something, it's, it's the legit. God's honest truth. Okay, I respect that. I respect that. But now that you said it, I'm probably going to tell them that they are real because it's kind of I funny. Think if you're going to pick any, pick Father Christmas. I mean, the Father Christmas one is really cool because it does give you the most stuff. Whereas the Tooth Fairy, you have to kind of, you know, take your teeth out mm. to get something. And and the Easter Bunny, I mean, how much chocolate can one eat? Yeah, true. Not a lot. I've still got all my chocolate. Really? That I've got given to me, yeah. Can we get it? I say, I've seen your eyes light up. Can I have it now? If we if we do a good job on this podcast, maybe I'll let you have oh, a yeah. little Easter treat. Carry on about your birthday. What are you planning on doing for your th It's the 30th. It's a big one. I had a massive party for my 30th. Was that your 30th? No, I didn't do anything for my 30th. Okay, yeah, I, 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 used, I used the third lockdown as an excuse to not have a big 30. You only turned 30 then? Yeah. So I'm not that much younger than you. I thought you would have been 30 about five, six, once seven to, years ago. Once you get to 30, everything sort of slows down in Wait, time. Wait, I think you're... I'm 32. You're not only... Two, Joe, you're like 37. I'm 32. I, I'm, hand on heart, do not think you're only two years older than me. Yeah. No, you're not. It's Ollie you're who's like the... Ollie and Jack were the youngest. You are, you're, you're entering your late 30s. I'm going to be 33 this year. So we're like becoming the same age. Yeah, you're catching up with me. I don't know how that's working. Do you feel like since you've been 30, the time has slowed down or is it because you've moved out here? Yeah, it has sort of slowed down a bit. Really? Slowed down. You start to care less. Really? Stuff. Do you yeah. get less anxious? Um, no, I feel like that's still, it's like a, I think, I don't know. I think it's also just being me. It's do you get less nervous for things? No, nope, still get nervous for things. Actually, do you know what? I think maybe later 30s, you start to care less. I think the older you get, the less you care about stuff. Do you find like your memory's completely gone? Um... Uh, <laughs> do I? <laughs> yes. Really? Yes, I do. Yeah. No, not honestly. Um, because my memory, my, I've lost my memory. My long-term memory is like scarily good. Do your farts stink more? <laughs> or is that just me? Yeah, but that's because I'm, that's because I... You're eating less healthy? No, I think it's from trying to eat more healthy. I think sometimes, sometimes my body's not conditioned to yeah. eat health, like healthier than I already am. How bad are they when you've had a Jaffa cake? 
I haven't had Jaffa cake since I was like. I literally had one the other 12. day. I'm just, I'm just glad you're not eating on this podcast. That's just reminded me. <laughs> I actually wanted. I had one of my points uh, is to talk about um, my new love of, of of British biscuits. Okay. And I was hoping to bring some on. Let's definitely get to that. But okay. first, I want to know where are we going for your birthday? What's happening? What is going on with this thirtieth birthday? So I don't like to organize stuff. And Which is ironic because when it's somebody else's birthday, Casper's the first one on the group chat going, what are we doing? Where are we yeah. going? No, it's, it's, it's just not as fun doing your own thing. It's better when it's someone else's day. Like yeah. even my wedding, I, I'm looking forward to it as obviously Amber's listening. <laughs> <laughs> I am very excited. Um, but it's also like, it's a mission. Like, yeah. And if, apparently a lot of people break up planning their wedding. You've got to kind of take one for the team though. You've got to go, look, I know it's, I'm not going to enjoy this as much as everybody else because... It's my event, yeah. it's my birthday, it's this, that, and the other. But for the, everybody else, they're having a, the best time because they haven't got a clean well, What up. is a good a... birthday event these days? Especially if, like, I don't drink much anymore. For my 33rd, you're invited to this, I'm gonna set up a LAN party. That's sick. So everyone brings a, brings a we will bring a PlayStation or an Xbox or something like that. We've got a selection of games you go through. I'm getting goosebumps in my legs wow, just I'm talking excited. about it. Look. Wow, he <laughs> actually <laughs> is. I'm so <laughs> excited about this thought. Look. What the f I know, I'm so happy. That um, is weird. You have like a menu of games. So it'll be like. Are you getting like aroused? I'm getting aroused by thinking about land parties. I'm doing a stag party. Yeah. That is something I'm doing. Oh, let's talk about the stag party. Okay. Who's in charge? Josh. We'll no, we're going to do it together. You and Josh. Yeah, we're going to combine. Do you think that's a good idea? I think that's a good idea for you because it means you'll probably get off, a, yeah. get out of a lot of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I've been on a few stag do's that. Um, I had to sort of hang back because I, and they were in London as well. And I was like, if I'm caught being seen in this environment, mm. I would, I'd probably, I'd probably get cancelled. What, what were you doing? Um, it involved a, an underground room in Whitechapel. Mm -hmm. The whole room stank of bleach. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it just been, it was, it was gross. And so what, you, you're okay with telling everyone exactly what happened, but you weren't okay with being caught. I was not it. part, I was there, but I was not part of it. I was, I was glad it wasn't like public walking. Why past was there bleach? I've, I don't know, the whole, that stank is of that, bleach. Were they cleaning up stuff I from thought, the previous parties? I thought that this is the set of like a, you know, have you seen the film Hostel? Yeah. I thought it was like Hostel 4 or something. Okay. And then have you seen those, those stags who make like people wear weird things to airports? Uh, people wear just stuff oil shirts. Yeah, but they, I think now the pilot won't take off now yeah. until they take the t-shirt off because well, they're worried that they might legit be a protest that's yeah. going to cause... Is that legal that you're not allowed to wear or like if you, you're not allowed pilot, to wear... I think it's the pilot's plane. Are they allowed to do I whatever think, they want? I think if the pilot doesn't feel comfortable with something, he has or she has the authority to say, I'm not flying this plane yeah. unless that person's taken off. Speaking about pilots, I was recently on a, on a flight um, to Turkey. Yeah. And I need to show you this video. Okay. The, the people that check on these podcasts are going to be very happy with that I'm segue. I'm really, really proud. Hopefully this feels more structured, this podcast. I don't know if it one. is. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is what I was watching before we were getting on the plane. Oh my God. It looks like a car mechanic. That is a B&Q ladder as well. Do you know what I mean? It just, it didn't fill me with confidence. Oh my God. And then I realized it was a Boeing and I was like, shit. Yeah, because is it Boeing that, have, that are a bit yeah, sort of risky the at the moment? And, and that's the thing. The weird thing is when you get on a plane, and I don't know what you think about this, it's really hard to find out what plane you're going to be on. Yeah. Like you book a ticket, yeah. you don't know how old it's going to be. You don't know if it's going to be one of the dodgy maxes. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you book an Uber, for example, that's like the first thing that comes up. Yeah. And you spend way more time on a plane. Yeah. And you so need, I think it's unfair. You need Boeing Lux. In that situation though, did you say anything to someone going, did, did anyone let you know what they were doing? No, I didn't. But in, it's weird. I almost feel like when I'm expecting something really bad to happen. Yeah. I think it's actually not going to happen because I'm like, what are the chances of me predicting that this plane is going to crash? I'm going to die in a plane crash when I'm not thinking about it. Yeah. That's kind of my The vibe. moment you take off without worrying is, is the, the time moment. where the wheels don't go in and the <laughs> engines catch on fire. Yeah, I'm the same. It's, that's how I think. It's, that's how I justify it. So it's a good, it's a good yeah. hack to use. If you're worrying about it, no, it's just in your head. It's not actually going to happen. And if you're worrying about it and the plane does start to crash, you're going down to die going, well, I guess yeah. I predicted it. I guessed it right. Yeah. We've actually always had funny moments on planes. There was one time we were flying from California to Atlanta to start our journey. And we were lucky the, the, the plane seats went flat. So Casper was asleep and they came around the cabin and they were like, we'll get 20 minutes to landing. Everyone sort of sat up and Casper just was still asleep. And I decided to not wake you up. I told everyone, don't wake him up. And for some reason, the air hostesses were like in on it. Is that it. an they, American thing? 
I don't know. They just did not care that you were still led flat. <laughs> so we landed. It's probably not a good thing at all. But the plane landed with Casper still flat. And I've never seen <laughs> you shit your pants oh, so, so bad on a plane. That was worse than the chicken oh, wings. Yeah. You literally sh You thought we crashed. <laughs> Dude, I was so scared. Casper messaged me on a flight recently saying, I'm on a 14 hour economy flight. And I put my chair back when we finished dinner. And the person behind me was like, D don't do that. And I was like, I'm going to. <laughs> then she called the air hostess, who was like, he can do that. And now she's kicking me every 10 minutes. It was so weird. To which I replied, OMG. He goes, what do I do? Podcast chat. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, tell her that if you couldn't put your seat back, then why do they have the button to do so? Tell her to F off. <laughs> Literally. So during the meal time, you don't need to put your seat back. And you actually, you, you know, you're, you're told by air hostesses and air marshals. What are they called? What are the male version? Air, air hosts. Flight attendant. Told by uh, flight attendant. Um, you're told by them, put your seat forward. The person's behind you eating. So that's, that's fine. Even See, I, I didn't even know you could do, had to do that. No, so I always thought do. if the button's there, then people, if they, if they don't want people kicking off over the seat reclining stuff, then just take the button away. So that, that, that's up, up to interpretation, that one. I think sometimes you can get away with it. Sometimes mm. you, it depends on the person. But once the meal's done, especially when they put the lights off and you're on a 14 hour flight, she literally said to me, don't do that. Yeah. And I looked around, I was like, um, yeah, but I kind of, you know, I'm going to. Yeah, I'm going and, to sleep. And, and, and she's like, no. Don't, no, you can't do, don't, don't do that. And I almost felt like maybe she hadn't been on a plane before. But uh, maybe, but what I don't get is that the seat goes back this much anyway. The thing is I'm biased because I'm short and, and you're tall. So the, the way I see it is if you're short, annoyingly, it's like, it's like for me my whole life, if I ever want, a, if we're all getting into the car, and I try and get any seat other than the middle seat. They're like, well, no, you're the shortest. You sit in the middle. That's the, that's just like the, the unwritten law. I could kick off about that. I could say, no, hang on a minute. That is being sizest. <laughs> yeah. I'm allowed to sit where I could sit in the front if I wanted to. But I realized <laughs> could. technically I Especially am. Especially when it's your car. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly. Your, even Joe's, when you're... It's Joe's own car, sit in the back in the middle. No, it's my car. <laughs> I don't know what it's like to be six foot. I probably will never will. It's not, I don't think to be fair, I don't think it's about your height when you recline because really? you're not getting more leg room by reclining your, your chair. You're doing it because you want to sleep. I just really just wanted to sleep and it was super awkward and she kept kicking. And then she did this thing where she didn't want to put her seat back because she was trying to make a point. But then over like, after three hours, I saw she put her seat she back. She put her seat. 100%. Seat. Oh, it's people like that. It's like- She realized, uh, I think this is how it works. Cause yeah. everyone in the cabin was all back together. We were all trying to sleep. It's a four, it was like a 14 and a half hour flight. Like that's, yeah. that's serious. That's like, that's like proper work. Did you say read the cabin? Like read the room, but read the cabin. Read the cabin. Read the cabin. Look, we're all reclining back. It's night time. Go to shh, go to sleep. And speaking about arguing, yeah. Can we go through my podcast points? Yes. <laughs> it's nothing okay. to do with arguing. <laughs> so each week I write down a list of things that happened to me in my life and yeah. see if it's worth bringing up on the podcast. Okay, yeah, I like that. So um the first one it says Is it kind of like Casper's diary? Literally, it's I a diary. That. So airport hotel rooms. Yeah. I, I guess, sorry, we, we just brought it straight back to flying again. Oh, this is the flight podcast. We stopped in uh, Turkey. Yeah. And we got to go to this airport hotel. Yeah. And it was really shit, really small, whatever. But it was the coolest thing ever, being in a hotel room in an airport. In an airport. Do you like doing that? Have no. you thought about doing that? No, never. So now when I do long haul flights, I'm going to try and break them up and go somewhere like, you know, Qatar or Dubai or wherever and not leave the airport and just have a shorter flight on each side. Really? Yeah, it's so your, sick. Your tip. Yeah. Any, any thoughts? Is it worth bringing up on the podcast or should we move uh, on? I think that's, I think it's a move on. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I think it's a move on. Um, it's good to know that there are hotels in airports. So I have not drinking wine or alcohol. Are you a teetotal? So no, I just really don't drink much. Yeah. And it's super awkward because I did a lot of business meetings and like everyone's drinking wine. Yeah. And you kind of like, no, not for me, but you kind of also want to say like, no, I, I, it's not like I have like this issue. I just, yeah, it's weird. Why do we have to justify that? I find like if you're, if you're not drinking, you're not taking part in those kind of things, you're not invited to as many things. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you also, I just feel like maybe you're, you, you also look like you're not there to have as much fun as everyone else. And yes. maybe, maybe they almost see that as like you putting your nose up at the dinner. Yeah. Which 
I disagree with. Exactly. I, think, I have just as much fun. When we went to, a, a good example is we, me and Casper recently went to um, France to watch the Rugby World Cup final. Oh, yeah. And um, it was with a, uh, a beer company. We did, we did have a few beers. We had a few beers, but <laughs> it, wasn't so, it wasn't long before Casper switched to the non, non-alcoholic yeah. beers. Um, and then I think I joined you at one point. Yeah. I was like, I'm going to try one. Because they also do, most of these beer and alcohol companies are now doing non-alcoholic versions. Yeah. Which, because weirdly, when I first tried beer as a kid, I mean, when I first tried beer at 18, but I did, I had a sip of beer when I was like five, <laughs> yeah. just to see what it tasted like. You didn't like the taste. It made me gag. But now you love the taste. But now I love the taste. That's exactly what's happened I to me. I love the taste of beer, but I don't want to get drunk. Dude, I don't, this I don't is want serious. to be in control of my body, and I, I don't want the bad bits that come with it. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. I love the taste of beer, but more so than that, I love the taste of draft beer. Yeah. And the annoying thing is, it's not often where you get on tap a non-alcoholic, but when yeah, you yeah. do, it is the best thing in the world. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you on that. I, There'd be a lot of people out there going like, it's not a proper beer unless it's got alcohol in, which I, I get. And there's sometimes, there's some scenarios where I will have, I do, I do still But they enjoy. do, some of them have alcohol, like, yeah. but 0.5%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like uh, Lucky Saints. Yeah. I think they like can't say they're non-alcoholic, but it's yeah. basically less alcohol than you have in like dessert. But you also remember, I'm tiny and I'm a lightweight. So for me, there's 0.5%. No, you can't. I don't think you Four can them, actually. I'm still, no. I'm, oh, I don't think you can actually get drunk because you're drinking so much liquid to the 0.5%. Oh, so, damn it. Um, okay, that's next my on my list, but was that good? Was I like that. that. Past that the was, podcast? That past, yeah, that was a good story. Okay. Um, <laughs> Amber going viral in Georgia. Oh. So there's this thing with TikTok. Yeah. Where if you go to like a more obscure country. Yeah. Um, like even New Zealand, for example, this happened to her. She just posts about being in New Zealand and everyone in New Zealand sees it. Whereas when yeah. she went to Australia, it wasn't like a big thing. In Georgia... Everyone, like everyone, had seen her TikTok, and it only had it had like a few hundred thousand views. As in people from Georgia. Yeah, and they'd never known her before, and they were like, "Oh my god, I saw your TikTok about Georgia." And so there's this really cool thing. I don't know if you ever go traveling to some like obscure place, make a TikTok while you're there. Yeah, yeah. About being there and, in that and place. See, a lot of people see it. Well, what was Georgia like? Because I've I've never, I'll be honest, I've never thought of going there as a holiday so cool. destination. So I mean, um, I, I went to this bathhouse while I was there. Yeah, I saw, I saw you getting whipped with a which branch. Was, was it? This is so cool. Let Did me you just get show you. By a branch or was that I, something different? No, I got spanked by a man, <laughs> uh, and I loved it. And uh, it was it was really cool. And then and then there was also this cool like the Georgian um, Hollywood Walk of Fame because oh, they also cool. love their. So Georgia's like the cultural capital of that area. Right. Geography wise, where is Georgia sitting? So it's it's like... just near Russia and Turkey. Russia and Turkey. Yeah. Okay. And so it was actually part of the USSR, but they have a very different culture to the Russians. But it was kind of like the place the Russians would all go and like have crazy parties and fun during times when right. they weren't meant to do that because of uh, communism. Okay. It was like uh, Russia's Ibiza. I like that. I, Georgia is on the list. I'd, cool. I'd, I'd quite like to go there. Okay, next thing to discuss is jet lag. Oh, back to planes. <laughs> sorry, We've gone back to planes move. again. It's not planes. How do pilots and air hostesses, sorry, or air marshals or air hosts, how do they survive? Because it makes me depressed. Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it, it gets harder as you get older, I feel like. But it's not so much the sleep for me, it's more my stomach. Yeah. My exactly, stomach. yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and is, that, is, that, is that jet lag or being it's, on a plane? It's, I think it's jet lag. <laughs> I'm so excited. I think it's a mixture of both. This is I relatable. Get, I get a bad stomach on a, tra- on a plane. Yeah. Not like I need to shit, it's more the opposite. It's like my stomach doesn't know yeah. what's going on. So yeah, so I experienced a lot of jet lag on my trip in the last time since we spoke. Yeah. And, and I just thought, we've got to get rid of jet lag. We, you've got to eradicate it somehow. I, I, I once had an idea. I don't know why I never took off. Why don't they fly us on these journeys to the very, very edge of the atmosphere? So you go, fly up to this hotel. You land at this sort of like space hotel. It's just outside of gravity. But you're floating and the world is moving underneath you. So you, you fly directly up to this hotel. You stay there overnight for like 12 hours or whatever. And you come down when you land, and you land in your country that you want what? to land into. So like if I want to go to Australia, so sick. So if I want to go to Australia, I go up to the space hotel okay. for a night. I stay there, and, and they you get a call. Uh, good morning, Mr. Sugg. Uh, we're we're going to be flying over Australia in um, an hour. So if you'd like to get your, get back into the pod and get for our. But descent. it's not even a plane. It's like an elevator. Yeah, it's like a. That's so cool. But I just don't know, don't know why. I'm too busy doing this. There must this be some kind sort of, of scientific reason. I there's mean, not, there's, I've looked. There's not. There's not a single scientific reason why it can't happen. 
Wow. I don't think that will help jet lag. Do you not think? No, because like... What? You're not in a cabin. Oh, no, right, jet lag is because of... It's nothing to do with the, the transport, in my opinion. Jet lag is because you've changed time zones. No, so I think it's all to do with... Because I even feel rough flying to South Africa. It's a one hour time difference. But it's, it's been... Okay, so we're talking about different things. It's You're getting a, IBS because of... Um, it's been in a tube full of the, people's farts. No, because of the, recycled air. The, the air pressure yeah, yeah, and all yeah. of that. Qatar apologizing for landing <laughs> early. Fucking so we're talking about planes. <laughs> so let's, we're on Qatar let's guess, what, let's guess what Casper does at the moment. Like, he's just always, you're always on a plane. So they literally, they're like... They're like uh, well, no, that's what I've done since I saw we're you. We're going to have one person in the comments who's going to enjoy this podcast going, <laughs> I'm, I actually work in aviation and I really enjoy this podcast. So, it's really insightful. So basically, you, they, they're like... we. Are, we're really sorry we landed um, at the wrong time, and, but it was early. Oh, no, don't apologize for that. It's it great. so strange. It's perfect. Um, okay. No, that's not, worth, that's not <laughs> worth bringing up on the podcast. Our MVE new logo. Uh, we can discuss that, yeah, shall we? So Joe and I are going back and forth. So we have a company called MVE, which is a management talent management company. Yeah, which you did mention. And uh, it used to be called Margravine. That's where we used to live. And yep. now it's MVE. And we're yep. trying to come up with a logo. But no one can agree. And I think there should be a meaning behind a logo. And then Joe just made up a random meaning to suit the logo <laughs> yeah, that he I, likes. So he was, I was like, Joe, what does this logo actually mean? And then he literally, what did you f***ing say? Wrote, it, was it was very sarcastic. It was a very sarcastic email because Casper was like, the, the logo has to have like a, a meaning behind it, which I agree with. But to what level? Like, do you think there's a, a meaning behind the, the tick, the swoosh? Yes. What's the meaning? Behind the the swoosh is more than just a check mark. Right. It represents the wing of the Greek goddess Nike, yeah. symbolizing speed, movement, power, and motivation. Okay. So now read the email out that I wrote to you explaining what MVE meant. The meaning behind the top middle one, Casper, is that of progress, of something mighty. It represents the long build of the company. And although to the untrained eye appears unfinished in places, it still stands tall amongst its competitors and will soon be leaving them in its shadow. It looks like pillars, too, which represent each of our core values. What the fuck? That sounded... That's bullshit. That took, I mean, me, that took me an hour to No, it, I hope you use ChatGPT. No, because I didn't. You, what, I mean, why would you want to say we're unfinished in places? Why would you want to say that as a management company? everything... They're tiny little places. They're like minuscule but things. But why would you? Okay, so Nike. You'd be lying if you were if you were saying after you, how, how new our company still is that it's oh we've really, no, really but it should it. be aspirational. Nike is. is all about movement, power, speed. I mean, even even the. Do you want to know the meaning behind the McDonald's logo? Yeah. No, I want to know the meaning behind the Sprite logo. Okay. Well, McDonald's logo. The, Sprite. the M stands for McDonald's. <laughs> no, but the M represents a mummy's memories. What's a memory? Is that that's, boobs? That's a boob. So why don't we could we're an M? Why don't we just do boobs? Which has been taken by McDonald's. That's McDonald's true. have boobs. So McDonald's, which one? Sprite. We turn upside down, do balls. You want to know the Sprite logo? Sprite, like yeah. I mean that sprite. doesn't. Imagery related to lemon lime flavor of the drink. See. What is the Sprite logo? Oh. It doesn't need. Yeah, it looks like no. Oh, okay. We do need um, something, man. Monster Munch. There's it's... you know influencer this one. Can you see this logo? Yeah. So yeah, screen. tell me. Yeah, tell me behind that then. Tell so me it's 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 meant to be someone. Um, I think on a computer, looking at something oh, or yeah, on I the see phone. It now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I have this thing. It looks like someone vomiting into a urinal. All that, yeah, true. Isn't that crazy? True. The thing is, we probably spent like f grand on that. Like that. Really? Yeah. Honest. Not just that, but like the whole branding exercise. What? And, uh, it's it's cr that's the problem. But well, we certainly haven't done that for MBE. No, no, well, I um, hope not. Well, we're we're not, don't know. We we're not. We're not there yet. <laughs> the next thing I wanted to bring up, since I saw you, yeah, um, yeah. is. Yo sushi. Why? I had some yo sushi. Oh, okay. And I just want to say it's the sickest place in the world. Really? Do you I've never think? been. I've never been. I'm not a fish eater, am I? I do not eat fish. Okay, but just now imagine yo sushi wasn't fish. It yeah. was Italian food. Okay. And it was all coming around on a conveyor belt and you could pick whatever you wanted. You didn't have to wait. You could leave really quickly. It's my ideal. Like, but how do they know how much you had? Oh, you, you have bowls. So right. you have your bowls with colors and this like uh, uh, your orange bowl is worth five pounds. Yeah. Another, and then you stack your bowls up and then they come in and they add them all up. So you still have to like pay before you leave. Yeah, you like, pay before you like, leave. It's not like Amazon Fresh Star where you just... Yeah, like, but that would be even sicker. Yeah. That's the one thing I wish I could like sushi. Mm. I've never been a fan of it. I just, for me, the, the concept of eating raw fish is just, um, I don't like it. And that's the thing, I'd love to go to Japan. I'd love to experience like... They do raw that. chicken. Raw chicken? Raw chicken. And remember when I got salmonella in South Africa? Yeah. But also, you know, you can but get salmonella from mayonnaise. Really? Yeah. Oof. So, 
It's from eggs and anyway, poultry. Oh, so, Hellman's. Look at their logo. What's the meaning behind their logo? Hellman's. <laughs> we got no salmonella. Uh, and then, so since I saw you, I also had a YouTube poker night. Do you play poker? I very badly, but I okay. play. So that's yeah. why I don't get invited. It's quite cool. I mean, yeah, a, a ton of like YouTubers come, entrepreneurs come, and all sorts. And it's yeah, we just have it in this who is office. It? This, who is it? It's, what the what office? I, my friend has an office. Right. They uh, and they, it's like in Soho. Yeah. Um, and we just use their one. Can you say who was at the game or not? Oh uh, yeah, I mean we had we had uh, Josh Peters. <laughs> yeah. We had Will and E. Yeah. Um, Carl Freezy was there. Chris M D. Vicstar. Um, I'm probably missing a few people. And so, yeah, it's really fun to see them. They're all yeah. like, it's quite fun because Vic is now doing his DJing yeah, yeah, as yeah. well. So he was doing a, a gig afterwards and he's such, he's like a chatterbox, which I love. Yeah. People say that if you're not good, sometimes that's better. It's you okay. Get I think I know the vague rules. I just can't, if I looked at a deck of hands, I, I wouldn't know. Deck whether, of hands. If I looked at my hand, I wouldn't know whether, um, I would know where to fold or to stay in, but I don't know what beats what. So I need a little chart out showing me what's better than what. I wouldn't. I would come, but maybe just come watch because you know, I look like a, a, okay. like a fucking loser. Why don't you just? <laughs> why don't you work on it? I can make the drinks. You can make the drinks. You can sing some songs. You can play that. Do you know that instrument? <laughs> <laughs> Bring your instrument. <laughs> um, I think yeah. It was. It's really fun to catch up and hear what they're doing and yeah, everyone. Yeah. Like, I mean, they just released like the thing called Best Cereal because like Tesco mm -hmm. asked them to make a cereal that was yeah. a bit healthier than other cereal. Um, and like, it's so. Imagine like the fact that we live in a world now where Tesco is calling up mm -hmm. YouTubers to get people back into cereal. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, I I really enjoy catching up and uh, it's, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, I'd love to come to that. Let me know next time and I'll I'll um for a sleepover and the last <laughs> it goes back to planes again oh my we're so not i'm back really on sorry surely we're not um, back on planes. amber blade you know who wants to be a millionaire yeah on the plane on the plane oh. and she won no she won have you ever won it on the plane i got to the million pound oh, so it's a flight is it was it was a flight yeah. to dubai or somewhere somewhere like that because they have it on the emirates planes oh yeah they have well. it on most of the planes and it was ba coming back from a flight once from dubai i was playing it the whole way back seven hour whatever it was journey oh, way back. And, I, and it got to the point where i played it so many times that i then knew all the questions yeah for the and first, then like, so then it starts getting to the final couple of questions where i didn't know it's uncharted <laughs> territory no. but i lose i go right back to the beginning and i know every That's single cheating. answer to the question um, and i got to the million pound question as we landed into heathrow yeah. and i had people behind me okay. and row behind that and across all watching me do the million pound no question way. and i got it wrong and i didn't win and they all like were like oh were all, and could you not yeah. ask them for help no they, none of them knew oh, none okay of them knew. None of them it was like my thing that's crazy I was like, no don't help me oh no, but, they, um, but i lost it but what a game that is if it's do you know what it's worth not connecting to the wi-fi and just playing it. that's a good playing it's story good, it's good fun it depends which one you get there was we played on one flight it was like really easy to get quite far yeah and the next flight it was like really hard and i almost feel like the older planes have the hard, harder version because yeah right we maybe know stuff that's happening today but those old planes have yeah. stuff i just can't remember oh the plane episode um sorry it really has yeah, been the plane let's, episode. let's move away from planes i want to finish on a segment okay um that i completely stole yeah um and it's about talking about things that you do at home that are really weird that you don't think anyone in the world does okay so is there something, and then someone can basically comment to say if they do it or not? Something I do that's weird. Oh God, have you got one for yourself? Yeah, okay, I don't know, Amber, Amber am I allowed to talk about it? But this is really fucking bad. And I hope no you one's watching this. You went back to front, don't you? It's something to do with, we're going back to toilet. Can I talk about something like really gross? You're at the end of the podcast. I feel like you're allowed to talk about gross stuff at Just the end of the podcast. No one needs to put this Because the people that are still listening or watching now are the, are the hardcore ones okay. that would listen to, like, would like to listen to us just so talk about anything. So I'm a big fan of urinals. You don't, you don't shit in the urinal, In the Middle you? East, no. Yeah. And, and in Asia and so on. And because I love how there's, it wets stuff. So when you're cleaning your... Well, urinal. Sorry, sorry, not your urinal. I've had this vision of you like washing sorry, your knob sorry, in your I urinal. love a bidet, oh. a bidet. Oh, a bidet, right, okay. But sorry, yeah. and I love how, I love cleaning my lower end <laughs> with, with, with some moisture. Yeah. And sometimes you don't get moisture because you don't have access to a tap and you can't, and I like to have, I like to have a bit of a wet. Yeah. So I sometimes. <laughs> What? <laughs> no, you don't. 
<laughs> no, you do, no, you don't. <laughs> no, you do. Not. What do you mean? You. Sh that is quite. I think you might be on your own there. Really? I, there might be but one or two that... others that may do that, but I think you might be on your own. Really? <laughs> yeah. Have you never? I don't do it every I've time. Never, if it's desperate. I've never even thought to do that. No. And Amber, did you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. Unfortunately, I did. I actually feel quite ashamed, and I would like to end the podcast. No, I think that's quite. That's good. That was a good um, bombshell to end it on. <laughs> so that's how it will always end. Um, so yeah, I hope you in, enjoyed this podcast. Obviously, we're, we're still trying a few things out. I yeah. I like the fact that maybe next week you'll come up with a list of things you do, and okay. then you you see are these things we should talk about on the pod? Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then we talk about them, or we don't. All right. Let's do that. Uh, and then the week after, I'll do it again. Let's do that. So okay. what's that called? What can we call that? It's like it's like a Casper episode it's a or a diary. Joe episode. Yeah, Joe diary, Joe's diary, Casper's diary. Casper's diary. diary. Yeah. Review my week. Review my week. Let's review each other's weeks. One hundred percent. All right. Something nice like, and let us know if you have any well, other ideas. Um, but I think we're getting more structured. That was the, the one negative comment we got yeah, last time. Yeah. The general consensus as well is that they loved just us rambling. Yeah, talking about but they want a tiny bit of structure yeah which we're edging towards but anyway thank you very much for for listening slash watching the podcast see you again very soon <laughs>